We're looking to get fairly equally spaced planks on the stern as well, on the transom. They may be narrower in this section just to get the, the plank to shape up to the transom curve. thing to do is to measure the circumference of the transom. Which is about 30 inches and then divide that by our 11 planks. So we're looking to have about two and three quarter inches of each plank showing. Which is from the top of one button to the top of the next, or the bottom to the bottom. Some of them are all similar thicknesses. But we've also got to allow for our inch of rubbing straight on the top plank. So that actually reduces that overall visible distance. So if we work on a, a bare two and three quarter inches per plank, we may have slightly wider down here, we may have slightly narrower there, but for these visible planks here, two and three quarters are just under will be good. So we've got an inch down. This is just measuring down from the, the shear line marked on the, on the transom, is there. Measuring down our inch. So then we want two and three quarters below there. Two and three quarters below there. And two and three quarters below there. So that's our average transom spacings, really. Just moving forward to the to measure these other moulds. They vary quite a bit. We've obviously got them fastened at the midships mould, so we've got room to play with them here. inches so take off our inch for the rubbing straight that's nine and a half so we're looking at just over three inches showing per plank so this one should be just over four because we've got an inch on the top those tacked in for now. Now it pays just to walk around, look at them from every angle. If there's something there that doesn't look right, then pull the nail out. Either let the baton sit where it wants to sit, or move it to somewhere that looks better. Refasten it and look at it all again. little offcuts of timber that are our plank thickness.
and we're limited by the radius of the curve of the mould as to how wide our plank can be. If we've got one plank there, and our next plank sits there, we really don't want it coming past the point where it touches the mould. Bearing in mind, of course, that this edge here is going to get bevelled, which is actually going to take this overlapping plank further in, which is going to bring this point here further down. So there, for instance, We're limited to about three and a quarter inches of plank above the plank underneath. Up here, we've got plank widths of three and five eighths, I think you said, wasn't it? That's three and three quarters. So we need to narrow our planking down a little bit to come down here. As we move aft, the tightness of the curve might increase, especially on the after mould and on the transom. So we have to bear that in mind and that will affect the widths of our planking all the way back. garboard plank, you generally hope, because it's quite a flat section of the boat, you hope to, to make up quite a bit of ground and have a wide plank there which tapers towards the ends. If you measure the circumference of the central mould and compare it to the circumference of the transom, or the, the distance down the stem. The planks have got to be considerably wider in the centre of the boat to make up that shape. It's like a barrel. In a big oak barrel, at the top they may be two inches. In the middle, the, the planks can be four inches. And they all have to have that shaping to make the curve smaller at the end. Now to fit the, fit the garboard plank, we can use our offcuts of planking. Because down here, down there, the hog needs to be at the correct bevel for the plank to be fastened properly to it. If that's our hog and that's our plank, it has to be beveled to fit exactly. Otherwise, when we put a nail through, it's just going to split the hog or the plank or both. So we can use our off-cut of plank to see how the hog lines up with the mould. That's not bad there. Moving aft, we can see that that needs to have a millimetre or two shaved off. And then moving back to mould number five, that needs quite a bit taking off there. So the best tool for that is the rebate plane. So we'll just have a shave of the hog. We need our plank to sit in there neatly, so we'll need to just rebate out a small section of the keel there. 
but here we've got to take a, a couple of millimetres off the outside of the hog. These are our keel blocks to hold the keel in place, and if they're in the way, we can just unscrew one at a time, get them out of the way, plane the hog, put them back, move on to the next section. sits and ties into the hog, it's never going to be perfect. So as you're shaving away the hog, you may find that you nick the mould and split away a piece of the mould there. That's really neither here nor there. We've got the important bit, which is the information up here, where our plank is going to sit. So it's this area here of the mould that's doing the work. So if we have to just nibble away a little bit of the mould there in order to get that nice shape for our plank into our hog, then the mould gets sacrificed. Once the hog near our mould is pretty much there, we can then fare into it from either a previous mould or in this case the transom. Because what we want is as that plank comes back, it needs to come and sit on the transom. And as you can see from the, the side view of the hog there, it's wider here than it is there, and that's just not right. It almost runs to nothing up here, so that curve on the top of the hog, or on the side of the hog rather, needs to run down there, and that's where we'll end up. If we just start off at the transom, at the angle of the transom, and work forward to the angle of our mould. We should shave away the timber we need to. sample of plank in there, you can see how you're doing. We've got a little bit of a lump underneath. Now sometimes it's difficult where the angle changes like that and you, you, you have difficulty getting the plane to change shape as quickly as you like. So a nice sharp chisel can do the job. 